the story begins with a boy named Rado looking at a girl and thinking she seems distant for some reason. This is the first day of high school, and Miss Miyahira tells them, I'm your homeroom teacher. Everyone listens to her silently, and she tells them to give an introduction. It's Rado's turn, and he introduces himself. As everyone claps, he thinks that high school is going to be different. He remembers he never really fit in during middle school because of how unfriendly he looked. But I'm gonna befriend whoever sits next to me, he decides. Just then, he looks beside him, and it's the girl who just finished her introduction. He realizes he missed her introduction. He looks at her notebook for her name, it's Aharon. He wishes her good morning, but she just stares at him and then looks forward. He thinks, is it a cold shoulder? Maybe she is afraid of how I look. He then thinks of talking with her with a smile. But again, when he talks, she remains silent. He thinks of not giving up and imagines if they become friends, his high school life is going to be the best. He again tries to start the convo, but she won't say a word. He talks about different things, still no response. The whole day passes, and he feels depressed that she never said a thing. He gets up to leave, saying goodbye to her. She says something, he looks back and thinks, I must have imagined it. He leaves, and she looks at him silently. Next day in class, he looks at her and thinks, even though she sits next to me, she's so far away. Just then, her eraser falls off. Rado picks it up and gives it to her. She just looks at him and looks forward. He then leans forward, saying, you drop this, and she just takes it. As the class ends, she appears in front of him. She speaks something, but her voice is too quiet to be audible. He thinks, she's right in my face, but she still sounds so far away. He remembers that day and thinks, did she actually say something? She then speaks in his ear that she forgot her book. Next, she sits close to him as he shares his book with her. He looks at her and thinks, she's just like a doll. Later, she again stands too close to him, and he asks, do you need something? Now, during break, she's sitting too close to him. She opens her bento box, and Rado thinks it seems oversized for her. She tries to feed him, and he says, okay, I'll try it, so stop. Afterwards, she finishes her whole lunch, and he looks at her, thinking she has a way bigger appetite. After school, they walk towards home together. She looks at him, and he realizes he wants to go to a game and bowl. They stop at a photo booth and take a picture of them. She then murmurs something in his ear. Now they are at karaoke, she sings, but it seems as if the mic is not picking up her voice. Rada wonders why she has become friendly all of a sudden. The next morning, when she enters the class, she ignores the greeting from him and sits on her seat and looks out of the window. Rado doesn't understand why she's behaving that way. As he takes out his book, he thinks, was she acting weird yesterday? He forcefully slides his table towards her. He then says, you forgot your book, wanna share mine? She looks down and sadly replies, I don't want to bother you. I don't know how close to get. I got too friendly when people were even a little nice. They didn't like it, so they kept their distance. So, I'm trying to be careful. But yesterday, you picked up my eraser and talked to me. I was really glad. But when I got home, I thought I might have overdone it again. He replies, that's not a big deal, as long as you don't go overboard. She hugs him and says, thank you. He says, okay, but could you let go? Class is about to start. As the class starts again, she sits very close to him. After school, as Rado is walking out, Eheron comes and holds him from behind. She tells him she was calling him, he says, sorry, I didn't notice. He thinks, her voice is so quiet that I keep missing things. At night, Rado is reading a lip-reading book. If he can master this, he'll be able to talk to her no matter how quiet she's being. Afterwards, he blocks his ears and asks his sister to help him practice. She starts speaking, and he guesses by reading her lips. The next morning, he tells Aharon, I've mastered lip reading. Now say something. But when she speaks, he notices her lips are barely moving. Afterwards, he thinks, I have to find another way. Just then, he sees his two classmates conversing through paper slips in the middle of class. And he thinks of doing the same. He hands a slip to Aharon and says, you can talk with me this way. Later, she throws it, he opens it to read, hello. It works this way. She then keeps throwing them, even when he's peeing in the toilet and even when he's changing in the boy's room. As she keeps tearing more paper, he stops her and thinks of another idea. He remembers when she grabbed him, he could hear her pretty clearly. And this strikes him, what if it was bone conduction? He tells her, let's try bone conduction next. From the next day, she starts hitting him to communicate through bone conduction. And during lunchtime also, he says, this is making my ears ring. At night, while lying in bed, he thinks, I should try some other options. The next morning, when his sister asks, are you taking all that to school? He thinks of using telepathy carrier pigeons Morse code hand signs to communicate with her. In class, he feels depressed as he runs out of ideas. Aharon apologizes to him, saying, you have tried different ways, but it hasn't worked. 
he says, you need not apologize, as I can see you are pushing yourself for me, you're talking louder than usual. She replies, this is how I always talk. He says, okay, if you say so. Later, as they walk back home together, he looks at two guys and can listen to what they said from not being too close. He thinks, is my hearing getting better? And realizes talking with Aharon has made him sensitive to even the softest sounds. Just then, he spots that she's not there. She is looking at the plushies. He thinks, does she really need to crawl all over it? Maybe she wants plushies. He puts a coin inside the machine to take one out for her. He tries to catch the plushie but couldn't able to pull it. He again puts the coin in. This time, he catches it through its leg but it falls off. Next, he tries to grab it through its hand, but it doesn't work. Now, he checks his wallet, it's almost empty. He tells her, maybe we should go. She continued to look at them, and then, as she placed a 500 yen coin down, she snapped her fingers. At that moment, a man appeared and placed a stole around her. Requires really precise spatial awareness. She takes out one of the plushies, holds it, and looks at it. Rado says, it's really impressive and realizes that time she was sticking to the glass to gauge its position. She then puts it aside and starts over again. She ends up collecting so many plushies. He says, you've caught a bunch, let's head home. But she stops him by grabbing his shirt. As he looks back, she gives him a plushie, saying, it seemed you wanted one. He realizes he wasn't after them for her. She says, you did a lot for me today, I want to thank you, and ends up giving him all the plushies. He gives her one, saying, you can have one. She takes it, saying, thank you. When he reaches home, his sister asks for one plushie. He leaves, saying, no, they were gifted. He enters his room and at night, he sleeps with them, that looks funny. The next day during lunch, he thinks, she's sitting even closer today. He takes out his lunch, saying, my mom is not at home, so I'll eat this. She offers her lunch box, saying, say, aw. He says, I can eat it myself. The next day when he enters the class, he sees her lying on the table and tired. He asks, are you ill? And she falls off onto his shoulder. She tells him, I woke up early, so I'm tired. He puts her on her seat and tells her, class is about to start, look lively. Afterwards, during class, he looks at her, her eyes are wide open. After class, he says, I'm impressed you stayed awake. He checks her and realizes she's asleep with her eyes open. As lunch break starts, she's still too tired. As Rado gets no response from her, he says, I am going to buy some bread. She stops him by tagging onto his leg and crawls as if she's possessed. Afterwards, she hands him the lunch. He opens it, asking, you made this. She nods and says, I woke up early to prepare lunch for you, as your mom is out for a while. That's why I feel tired today. He eats the lunch, saying, if you're tired, you can lean on me, and thanks her for the lunch, and she blushes. And in the next second, she's lying on him, that goes way beyond leaning. He thinks, she's really hard to predict. And now, we see her putting one leg on his face, and he says, wake up, class is about to start. Meanwhile, we see a girl getting jealous as she observes them. The next morning, Eherin enters the class with a messy look. Rado is confused about what might have happened to her as she walks to her seat. He wonders if she was in a fight with guys from another school on her way here. In the next moment, she's standing close to him and gives him a headshot, asking if he's okay. He answers yes but questions what happened to her. She tells him she got something in her eye. With one eye shut, it was hard to gauge distances. He gives her some eye drops, but she ends up spilling them all over her face. Rado tells her, let me do it. She sits on a chair, and he tries to put the drop in, but her eye is closed. So, he opens it with his fingers and tries to put the drop in, but it falls off as she moves. He tries again, but she keeps moving. So, he holds her face tightly, which looks really funny, and then finally puts the drop in her eye. He then checks if it's properly gone inside her eyes. She says, it's kind of embarrassing to be so close. He leaves her and thinks to himself that she normally gets plenty close herself though. During lunchtime, she thanks him for the help by putting lunch on his face. Just then, the wind blows and something gets stuck in his eye. Aharon pulls him onto her lap and says, let me return the favor for you, and starts dropping the eye drop but ends up dropping it all over his face. Someone is stalking them, and Rado gets up as he feels it. In class, when Aharon is napping, Rado tells her to wake up, it's time for the next class. He again feels someone is watching them. He wonders if he's just imagining things. Later, we see Aharon taking him somewhere, and he again feels someone is following them. He looks back as he feels like he's being watched lately and thinks it could be a hitman. He recalls if someone holds any grudge against him. When he was young, he once left the bread in his desk as he was already stuffed. He even ate his sister's pudding, who cries out, calling him awful. 
While playing football, he kicked it into someone's flowers. In the present, while walking with Aharon, he thinks, I was such a monster. He is now being watched while sitting on the toilet seat, while changing his t-shirt, and even while going back home. The next day, he's not feeling good. He tells Aharon, since yesterday, I've had the feeling someone is watching me. Aharon holds his face and starts patting him. He says, okay, I feel better now. Suddenly, he again feels someone's presence and runs to check. As he looks at her, she seems bigger and very enraged. But in the next moment, she starts crying with a puppy face. Aharon says, Oshiro-san, and Rado asks, do you know her? Now, we see her outside crying, and Aharon is patting her. She gets up, saying, now I'm calmed down. As Rado tries to speak, she scares like a scaredy cat. Aharon calms her down. Oshiro says to Rado, please stop trying to menace Aharon. She's small and cute, bad guys will obviously try and prey on her. And as her childhood friend, it's my job to protect her. I was watching you, but I've been so scared of you that I couldn't bring myself to step in. This made him depressed. Aharon pats him, saying, you're not scary. She then knocks her head gently and says, he's not a bad guy. Ashiro says, oh, he has entrapped you this much. Rado tries to speak with her again, but she scares. She says, I'll continue to keep watch from afar, and runs away. From the next day, while they eat, she keeps her watch on. While Rado walks in the corridor or goes to pee, she keeps watching from afar, making Rado now feel depressed. The next day, Aharon is sitting in class with a mask on her face. Rado appears and asks, are you sick? She nods her head. But when she looks down and sees that his zipper is open, she's completely shocked. She tries to explain to him with movements, but it doesn't work. So, she tells him this in his ears, but he can't hear her as she has a mask on. She then tries to explain to him with sign language but fails. During class, Rado looks at her and wonders what's up with Aharon just now. Oh, maybe she's feeling motivated. She must be fired up today. And then he decides to keep up her motivation. Just then, the teacher asks who will come up and solve this. Rado raises his hand. And Aharon also raises her hand with weird movements to stop him. Seeing her so motivated, the teacher lets her come and solve the question. She starts writing fastly. The teacher says, yes, it's correct, but what's the drawing for? Well, only she knows it's Rado's open zipper. During drawing class, the teacher announces, we'll be doing figure sketches today. We will need a model. Any takers? Rado again raises his hand, and Aharon tries to put it down. The teacher says, looks like we've got two models ready. So, while Rado poses, Aharon stands before him holding an apple. Next, when he goes to the toilet, his zipper is still open, which shocks Aharon. In the next class, when Rado goes to take his result, Aharon covers him. And in another class, when the teacher calls Rado to explain things, Aharon covers his zipper through the table. Aharon is totally exhausted by the end of the day. As he tells her it's time to go home, she runs to cover him. As they walk toward home, he tells her it's really hard to walk like this. Can't you walk next to me? He asks, and she shakes her head. He doesn't understand why she's behaving this way. Could it be she wants me to notice something? He wonders. She then stops to show his open zipper on glass. He looks at it and then realizes, he speaks up, Aharon, I'm sorry that it took me all day to notice you cut your hair, didn't you? She's totally shocked and falls to the ground, thinking, I'm dead, lol. Now, Rado reaches home, wondering about what Aharon wanted to tell him. His sister cries out, Nichan, your fly is open, you perv. He's totally shocked to see this and falls to his knees. He realizes this is what Aharon wanted to tell him. The next day, at school, we see Aharon sitting alone in class. Someone walks in tiptoe, it's Oshiro, who is here to check on her. She sees Rado didn't come to school today and feels happy that today she can look after Aharon as much as she wants. She remembers she always used to sit next to her in middle school. She then thinks why Aharon is not heading home when class is already over. Maybe Aharon forgot her umbrella. Oshiro throws her umbrella towards her without being noticed. Aharon looks at the umbrella, and Oshiro hopes she didn't see her. Aharon then starts checking it and then hides behind a chair. Oshiro internally says, it's not a bomb. Then Aharon hands it to the teacher, thinking someone lost it, and Oshiro takes it back after she leaves. Now, as Aharon has gone to the washroom, Oshiro comes and leaves it on her desk. When Aharon comes back, she's scared it may be a cursed umbrella that comes back no matter what you do. So, she seals the umbrella by locking it. Oshiro feels bad, and just then, she sees Aharon standing there. Oshiro freaks out and starts running away, thinking she'd made her mad and assumes she was pranking her. Aharon is coming after Oshiro, but she's really slow. However, little by little, Oshiro is being cornered. Oshiro thinks there's nowhere to run now. 
She then thinks of hiding on the roof, but the door is locked, and Aharon is already there. Ashiro is totally scared as if Aharon is some kind of robber going to murder her. She gets more scared as Aharon looks at her face, but in the next second, Aharon gives her the umbrella. Ashiro looks at it, shocked that she already had an umbrella. As they both walk home under Aharon's umbrella, Ashiro says, I was trying to give you my umbrella, thinking you hadn't brought yours. Ashiro then asks, are you tired of holding the umbrella so high? Aharon says it's okay but it doesn't seem like she is. Ashiro says, let me hold it for both of us, but just then, the wind blows, and Aharon gets wet. Now they both wait for the rain to stop. Aharon feels cold and sneezes. Ashiro offers her spare sweater to Aharon. She wears it, it's too big for her. She calls Ashiro close, and Ashiro is in cold sweat, thinking, is she mad at me? Will I get corporal punishment like before? She hesitatingly goes closer, and Aharon says, thank you, for the sweater. She then thanks her for always walking home with them. You're usually too far away to hear me. I finally got to thank you. But just then, Ashiro realizes Aharon actually knew she was following her on the way home and runs away, embarrassed. The rain also stops, and the sun appears along with a beautiful rainbow. The next morning, Rado enters the class and looks at the umbrella sealed on Aharon's table and doesn't understand what it is. After school, as they walk back home, they are being watched. Rado thinks why Ashiro is being more cautious than usual. In the next scene, we see Rado touching his hair and thinking, I feel like my hair's gotten long. But when Aharon enters, he's shocked by her appearance. He looks at her and wonders what made her hair stand like this. Is she hardcore into death metal? He thinks as she starts headbanging. This, he surmises, is a sign of frustration with the status quo. After class, he asks her if something is bothering her, offering to talk. She tells him that she had really bad bedhead that morning, and this happened. She comes closer to him and says, I tried to fix it myself, but it didn't go well. Later, he tries to fix it but ends up making her hair look like tentacles. If one of the guidance counselors sees this, they'll shave her head, he thinks. He opens the cupboard for something to help but finds Oshiro, who is keeping an eye on them. She gets scared and starts running away. She looks back, and both of them look like monsters to her. And she runs, but just then, she realizes Aharon has bad head. She approaches her and tells her, maybe I can fix it. Next, we see Ashiro spraying water on Aharon's hair. Rado says, your house is a hair salon where Aharon used to go, right? Ashiro tells Aharon, I'll start, and she nods. She starts with her bangs and keep cutting the hairs. Rado thinks, isn't that a bit much? She then starts styling her hair, this one makes her look like a baby. Rado thinks she might be giving her a weird haircut, thinking it may make him leave her alone and then he imagines different weird haircuts. But the final look is pretty nice. Aharon looks so cute. She then says, I'm going to the bathroom. And Ashiro says, I can cut yours also. He thinks, I could save the cash my parents gave me for a haircut. But when he sits down to take it, he feels a sense of bloodlust and thinks, is she gonna shave me bald? But she ends up giving him a nice cut. He says, I thought you might shave me bald. She says, I wanted to shave you bald, but Aharon would have gotten mad at me. Just then, Aharon appears and touches her, thanking her and inviting her to have lunch with them as a token of appreciation. They all sit together for lunch. Aharon offers her a meatball, and Oshiro opens her mouth to eat it as Aharon places it in her mouth. Rado now thinks the hair problem is solved, but with the way she's acting, she might still be stressed out. Just then, she shows her hands, saying they're all dried, and her lips are too. Rado takes out lip balm for this. She tries applying it but messes up her face with it. Rado says, let me do it. He opens her mouth and starts applying it but ends up making her face look funny. She cleans it off. Rado thinks putting on lip balm is hard. At this rate, she's going to be cracking all over. Ashiro says, let me help. She applies some moisturizer, saying, we need to do that before lip balm, and then applies it. She then makes her eyebrows and curls her eyelashes too. Then she gives her some foot and body massage. Rado thinks she's getting the full course. After they're done, Ashiro gives her hand cream and she starts applying it. She then asks for their hands and applies it, saying, I use too much. You can have some. In class, Rado asks her if anything is bothering her. She says, can I see your notes from the last lesson? He gives them to her, and as she notes them down, she says, I can't see the board because the person in front of me is so tall. He looks at the guys who are really tall and realizes she was doing that in an attempt to see the board. He tells her, let me help out, and stack some extra desks to get more height but she's scared. Next, he tries to hold her up so she can see the board, but his hand starts hurting. They start using different techniques with the help of a mirror, Walkman, sticking to the roof. She even sits on his bench, 
and they try other means. The best option they find is she sits next to Rado and copies his notes. The teacher announces that next week, they'll be moving seats in class. Aharon then goes back to her seat as class ends, and Rado seems sad that they're going to be parted. He thinks of doing something for her before their seats separate. During PE period, Rado tells the teacher that his partner is absent today. The teacher says he is paired with Oshiro who was left hanging too. Everyone is stretching with their partners. Rado says, let's stretch. She puts on her ponytail, and as Rado stretches her, he hears an egg-breaking sound. He asks if she's fine. She says, yes, just push harder. As he's done, she looks like a broken doll. She then stands up and walks away to play. Rado wonders just how flexible she is. Now, a heron is batting, and Rado is bowling. She stands in a certain pose to feel comfortable. But Rado thinks that's the infamous batting scale's stance. He says, but I am not holding back. He throws it, she doesn't hit it. Next, he scans the area where to throw the ball. Aharon's arm itches, but he thinks she's signaling a home run. And then she gets ready to hit the ball. He thinks she's serious, but in reality, she feels droopy because of the heat. He throws the ball, but she doesn't hit it and then run for home run, winning the match. Next, we see them in a cooking class. The teacher instructs them to prepare the meal of their choice. Rado looks at the others and thinks, I don't know how well they cook, but I don't know a thing about cooking. But we'll be okay because we've got expert chef Aharon in our group. He looks toward her, but it seems like she's already exhausted. She's too worn out from pee. He takes out a knife to make something for her so she'll have the energy to cook. He turns on the gas and starts cooking. The food he made turns out to be giving off bad aura. Plus, he's totally worn out from this. Just then, Aharon taps him and, with a mouthful of his food, says, I've got it from here. He falls off tired, saying, Okay, it's in your hands now. Now, she ends up making the most delicious meal. The teacher praises the students, saying, Good work. Rado still feels exhausted. During lunch, Aharon opens her box and then offers her meatball to Rado, thanking him for the food he cooked for her and keeps feeding him, making his mouth totally full. Afterwards, she takes out her phone and asks for a favor, and that's Rado has to record her doing weird moves. He thinks, does she want to become a YouTuber? She then thanks him for recording her. He gets emotional, thinking that Aharon has found a dream. He tells her, I want to help you. She says, really? And then they pose to rehearse. He thinks, maybe she wants me to become a YouTuber too, and imagines himself being a celebrity. They both start rehearsing. In the park, they rehearse dance moves. Also in the street, with Rado thinking, we'll become the most famous YouTubers. They keep on rehearsing and recording themselves in different places. Later, Aharon looks at the video they made and thanks him for the help. Rado shakes hands with her, thinking, we'll get popular together. The next day, the teacher says, it's time for the original dances you were assigned. Aharon makes weird dance moves. The teacher says, all right, you pass. Rado realizes they were only rehearsing for this. Later, Rado checks the video they uploaded on YouTube, but seeing no views on it, he feels really depressed. Now the day has come to change seats. Aharon touches Rado and says, I'm sad about getting seated away from you. Rado cheers her up, saying, we can still go home together, and then starts remembering all the time he spent with her. The teacher ends up changing the seats of a few students. Rado and Aharon look at each other gladly as they're still together. In the next class, the teacher enters and starts taking the class. Ishikawa tells Rado that Tobaru-sensei is a bit mysterious, and I heard she has health problems. She sees him talking and tells him to stop. She continues to start reading, but just then, she spots Rado and Aharon and thinks they are flirting by sitting too close. But soon, she realizes he's just sharing the book she forgot. She gets emotional seeing his kindness towards her, and enters into the world of her poetry, imagining things about their bond. She then calms herself and starts teaching again. But just then, her heart pounds as she sees she's sitting on top of him. Ishikawa asks, are you okay ma'am? She replies, I just need a moment. She looks at them, they're sitting so they can both see. She tries to focus on the class, but now she sees Aharon on Rado's shoulder, and realizes the boy in front of them is tall, blocking the board. Rado lifted her so she can see. She nosebleeds, saying, extreme kindness. Ishikawa says, she collapsed, and Rado replies, she seems in fragile health. During lunch, when they are eating, suddenly Aharon starts acting weirdly. Rado thinks, is this a demonic possession? And then he saw her pointing toward water. She drinks the water, and Rado asks, are you okay? She tells him, I was choking on some food. Rado now thinks that it's hard to read Aharon's expression. So, he asks her, shall we practice being more expressive? Aharon nods her head. They begin with a basic smile, he tells her to make the same face as him, and she does the same. 
Now, he starts giving her a facial massage to make her facial muscles flexible. It's easier to make expressions doing that. Now, he takes her to the theater, which helps her to learn to cry. Next, Rado takes her to a haunted house, and then tries to scare her. He even takes her to a street show to learn to express. The last thing he tells her is to have a staring contest. They keep staring at each other for a long time. He says, Ahuran San, to win, try to make a funny face. She makes a face that makes him laugh instantly, and he ends up losing. Now, he shakes hands with her, saying, now your training is complete, and they take a selfie with a smile at the end. He checks the old pics to compare with the new ones how she's improved in expressing. But it turns out there is no change at all. At the store, he thinks, as we have practiced a lot, I should be better at reading her expressions now. Aharon looks at the Japanese rap section, and he understands she wants to try it. She puts on headphones, and she likes it. The next morning, while walking to school, he spots Aharon and greets her. Aharon takes out a microphone and starts rapping. He is amazed to hear this and realizes she learned it from yesterday's CD. She's a quick learner. He thinks rap has a strong backbone of personal expression versus other music styles. This can be the perfect way to communicate with Aharon. He then tries to respond to her rap, but he finds it a bit hard. So, he practices it at home with his sister, but she doesn't respond. He then does it with his mom. The next day, he enters the class and talks with Aharon by rapping, and she replies by rap too. He starts imagining that in this way, they can understand each other better. In break time, they both communicate through raps. They both start a rap battle. It turns into a freestyle battle, but it seems like it's a draw. The teacher appears and tells them it's against the rules to bring a microphone. As they walk home, Rado says, we don't need a mic, and tries to rap. Aharon also raps, but they realize a mic's integral. The next morning, when Rado leaves for school, his sister remembers she ignored him yesterday. It was harsh. As he's wearing shoes, she comes in with a rap, apologizes for her behavior. She gifts him a fidget spinner as an apology. But he doesn't understand, so she blushes and leaves, saying, I got bored of it, you take it. In class, while he spins it, Aharon appears and asks, what is this? He says, see for yourself. She starts playing with it. He tells her, you can take it home if you want. At home, she keeps spinning it the whole night. The next day at school, when Rado looks at her, she's still spinning. The teacher thinks, I was right, they are close, the way he looks at her. But Rado is amazed by the trick she does with the fidget spinner. He tells her not to play with it during class. The teacher thinks, I was wrong. He's explaining to her the part she doesn't understand. She nosebleeds by this kind act, and Ishikawa asks, Are you okay, ma'am? On the way back home, Aharon keeps spinning it. Rado says, It's dangerous to do while walking. She replies, I keep doing it without thinking. The next day, he saw her non-sleepy eyes and asks, Are you sure you're not overdoing it? But she won't stop all day. And even when he kicks the ball, she stops it with the fidget spinner. He thinks she's totally addicted. He thinks of doing something as he imagines her future with the fidget spinner and worries about her. But if I take it away, maybe it will get published in the papers as an act of cruelty. He is depressed, thinking, what am I supposed to do? Just then, she stops and gives it back, saying, I have spun it plenty. Rado takes it and recalls those moves. Now, he keeps spinning it to learn moves, and his sister asks, are you sure you're not overdoing it? The next day, they're sitting in the park, just when Rado thinks, it feels so nice, it's quiet. A dog appears, wagging its tail. Rado scares, thinking, is it gonna attack us? What should I do? But just then, its master appears, saying, its leash slipped away, sorry, and takes it away. Just then, Rado sees a wild cat on Aharon's lap, and it runs away because of some noise. It's the noise of kids who come running towards them. Aharon tries to hide as Rado thinks, what aggressive kids. They call her king. She tells Rado, I was playing in the park, and they looked up to me. Now they treat me like a king. They ask her to show new moves. Rado gets up and says, don't bother her. They ask him, are you the king's new apprentice? We were first, we outrank you. Go fetch us some juice. Futaba appears, saying, you guys need to give it a rest. Akin says, buzz off. Rado looks at them as they both argue with each other. Futaba then angrily says, it's all your fault, Aharon Rene. She tells Akin that Aharon is seducing him, and he says, you're wrong. She then challenges Aharon to play reversi with her. And if I beat you, you have to leave Akon alone. Rado says, you don't have to do this, and Futaba tells him, I'll call 911, so don't interfere. Akon also tries to stop her. Just then, Rado says, beat me first in the game. They both start the game, but she easily defeats him. She then says, evil mastermind Aharon, step forward. Aharon starts to play but ends up losing. She tells Rado, I lost on purpose so these kids leave us alone. 
The girl happily says, I win, now leave Akon alone as promised. Akon says, the king lost on purpose, and why are you always bugging me? She starts crying and runs away from there. He can't understand. Aharon taps him, saying, you went too far. Go apologize to her, and they do the same. Aharon says, so much happened, I'm exhausted now. In the next scene, we see Aharon tapping her fingers continuously and hurting Rado. Just when she realizes this, she apologizes. He asks what got her so worked up. She shows him she's playing a monster collecting game, Hawkeman, and says she recently heard it was popular, so she tried it out. Rado takes out his phone and says, let's battle. He opens the game and chooses Yankiras, the strongest monster with 9999 HP. But Aharon chooses the cute Shiroran with only 65 HP. He asks if she's sure she wants to go with that one. She says yes. Now the battle starts. First, Yankiras blows strong blue flames at full speed. But Shiroran is still standing, using a single-use item that lets you survive a critical hit. Rado is impressed by this. Now it's Shiroran's turn, it attacks Yankiras. Rado thinks Shiroran's attack is not strong enough to do anything to Yankiras. But then he sees Yankiras getting affected and realizes that the move lowers your opponent's HP to whatever yours is. Now the second round starts. As Rado is about to give orders to Yankiras, Shiroran punches its foot. Yankiras' HP goes to zero, and it falls down defeated. Shiroran goes back to Aharon, and she pats it. So, Rado loses this round as he thinks she planned and well to defeat him, making him dance in her palm. Aharon says she wants to go again, but Rado replies, sorry, I've had enough. On the way home, Rado says, can we stop in for a bit so I can use the bathroom? As she's waiting for Rado, Futaba enters. She goes to look for the monster plushie Akon wants and thinks, if I get this, I can give it to him as a birthday present and win his heart. She then spots Aharon and imagines her as a shot Akon trying to lure Akon away from her. Ignoring her, she puts in the coin and starts playing. But then she tells Aharon, witness my brilliant technique to get the plushie, and pushes the buttons, but every time she tries to get the plushie, it falls off. Now she's left with only one coin. She starts crying, calling it a scam, saying they're scamming people. Just then, she sees Aharon standing on a stool to play. She puts the coin in. Aharon looks at her as Futaba says, don't butt in. Futaba thinks, why is she giving me that just watch look? But she's convinced Aharon won't win. In the next moment, we see Aharon wins many monsters. Futaba thinks Aharon won all those just to show off. She walks away and drops a free crane game ticket. Futaba gives it to her, saying, you dropped this, but Aharon is busy putting plushies into a bag. She puts the ticket in her pocket, saying, I won't take your charity. I will win one myself. Futaba then goes to play again one last time. She spots a monster in the perfect position but wonders how she should move it. She recalls how Aharon did it and tries to copy her. She pushes the button and ends up winning it. She picks it up and says, You saw that, Aharon Rene. I won it. And Aharon claps for her. She says, I don't need your claps. I'm going home. As she walks home, she thinks Aharon is a dummy. She ignored one in the perfect spot. But then she realizes Aharon did that on purpose for her. She feels embarrassed for behaving that way towards her. Meanwhile, Rado comes out of the bathroom and asks, You played the crane game again. And Aharon hands him all the plushies she won. He says, I already have tons. But he ends up bringing them home. Now we see Ankira's getting defeated again by Shiroran. And he also ends up getting electrocuted. Anyway, it's just his dream. The next morning, Rado greets Aharon. And she's shocked to see him. She asks him if he put on some weight. He freaks out and ends up breaking a window and falling down. But it was all Aharon's imagination. So in reality, she decides not to tell him. During class, she looks at him and imagines him before and after. She thinks, is it because I am feeding him too much during lunch? She decides to do something about this. The next morning, she's reading a diet book when Rado appears. She asks, you didn't see anything, right? He asks, what do you mean? She feels relieved he didn't see, but in actuality, he did see and thinks, is Aharon feeling self-conscious about her weight? At night, he reads a book about dieting because he wants to help Aharon do it in a healthy way. But first, he applies the book's teachings to himself. He starts exercising, then takes some protein supplements, works out again, and goes for a run. The next time he appears in class and seems slim again, Aharon feels relieved. He tells her, you can follow this book if you want to diet. And she says, I wasn't really thinking of dieting. Now the class starts, and the teacher tells them they'll be having exams next week. Anyone who fails must retake a supplementary makeup exam. Rado thinks, last time I scored very badly as I was at the bottom of the list with 151 rank. He feels depressed that he hasn't studied at all this time either. He looks at Aharon and thinks she doesn't seem worried at all. 
I could have her help me study, she could be my saving grace. Later, he asks Aharon, would you like to study with me after class for the exams? She nods her head. They decide to study in the library, but they can't talk, so they use notes to communicate, and doing this, the notebook fills up. So, they decide to study somewhere else. They go to a cat cafe to study but couldn't concentrate with the cats around. They go to a restaurant but end up having cold drinks and no studying. They go to a park to study, but kids appear to distract them, and Futaba challenges her in math. Finally, they decide to study in class. She helps him to study, and they prepare for the exam together. One day before the exam starts, they have cleanup duty. A girl tells them, we'll do the floor, can you two handle the rest? Rado says okay, and as he looks at Aharon, she's totally prepared with all the cleanup tools. She tells him, I love cleaning, I've got this. First, they're going to clean the board. Rado looks at her and thinks, is she taking out a secret weapon that can destroy anything? But it turns out it's just to clean the board. Next, she starts cleaning the windows just like a professional. Rado thinks she's pretty hardcore about this. Could it be that Aharon comes from a family of assassins? She's been trained since birth to be an underworld cleaner. Her lack of expression comes from being trained to suppress her emotions. Now I know her identity, she's going to clean me up next. She appears, saying, I'm all done. She then mixes a liquid in water, and Rado thinks she's going to poison him. But it turns out it's just a cleaning solution for killing dirt, and others thank her for her help. After cleaning, others wave them goodbye, and they decide to study for tomorrow's exam. Before that, she tells him to put the podium back, and she herself goes to put the bookshelf back. It's heavy, and she falls down, and the bookshelf is going to fall on her, but Rado appears in time and saves her. He asks, are you okay? She says yes but feels sorry. Then they start studying. Later, when they are finished studying for tomorrow's exam, Rado thanks her for tutoring. She says something, but he couldn't listen. So, she hugs him, and he asks, what is it? She says, this is the first time I was able to help you, I'm so happy. She recalls all the things he did for her and says, you're always doing so much for me, I'm glad I can finally repay you. Rado replies, this wasn't the first time, you're always helping me, and they thank each other. Now we see the scene of result day. And this time Rado has improved, he gets 80th rank in class. In the next scene, the teacher tells them that today they're free to use the pool as they like. Just then, Aharon appears, and Rado wonders why she is in gear. She tells him water possesses great danger. Rado tells her the pool is shallow, so she doesn't need to worry. She says okay and removes all her gear. Now, they decide to swim together. But as Rado looks back, he sees Aharon is underwater. He pulls her out, asking if she is okay. She tells him sorry, she can't swim. He says, just watch me how to swim, but ends up like a heron. He thinks, am I bad at swimming? Just then, they see Ashiro swimming very well. He reaches the side and comes out. Rado compliments her as a good swimmer. She replies, would you like me to teach you? She starts helping them to swim, but every time they fail to learn. But they eventually end up learning. They thank her. Rado then asks Aharon, why don't we have a race? Ashiro says, get ready and go. They start swimming. Rado seems to be winning, but before he can reach the line, Aharon reaches it before him. She then turns towards Rado, who wonders if she needs to breathe. Next, we see Rado enters the class and picks up a tennis bat. Aharon is standing in a position that suggests she wants to play. Now Aharon throws up the ping pong ball. Rado thinks, could she be a ping pong girl? But in the next second, she isn't able to hit it, and he realizes she sucks at it. He recalls all the games he played with Aharon but he never beat her even once. He thinks this could be his best chance at beating her, but every time he tries to hit the ball, it won't touch the bat. Now, he thinks of giving the best serve, and the ball ends up falling behind her. He calls it a Newton serve, you drop the ball onto the paddle, all you need to do is adjust the angle, and the serve will land on its own. He gives a Newton serve again. Now it's Aharon's turn, and she gives the same Newton serve. Rado realizes that she's talented at mimicry. He again gives a Newton serve, and she returns it back. He realizes Aharon is getting better. They now reach a match point, both having 10 points. The next ball will decide who is going to win, but they keep playing. Aharon thinks, rallying like this is fun. Rado thinks, if we keep playing like this, we can aim for the top of the world. Now the ball is about to fall on his side, he blows air to stop it. But just then, time ends. And it got stuck in the net. He shakes Aharon's hand, saying it's a draw, let's take the world together. But they end up losing to their classmates, scoring zero. Rado thinks the hurdle for global competition is high. Later, while going back home, Rado spots a game of bowling and thinks it's the perfect chance to settle scores. Inside, they get ready to play. 
Aharon chooses the heaviest ball, the 16-pounders. Seeing this, Rado also picks the same, thinking, I can't back down. He tells her, let's get started. She holds the ball, and Rado thinks she's going to do a two-handed throw. She must be a bowling prodigy, but in the next moment, she falls off. Rado asks her if she is fine, and she says, it's too heavy. He asks if she picked up the ball randomly, and she nods. He tells her, let's start with lighter ones. She then starts playing. It seems like she's playing very well and ends up scoring points. Rado thinks, I can't lose, and throws his ball, thinking, it's time to nail this set. But he scores zero points. In the next round, he plays well. But when they see the scoreboard after playing too much, Aharon is at 91, and Rado is also at 91. But he has one more chance, which means he can win. His arms are reaching their limits. Still, he throws the ball with all his might but ends up making no scores, and it's a draw. Now, they walk out, on the way, they find a basketball. Rado thinks they can settle things with this. Aharon is all fired up to play. Rado tells her the rules before starting the game. They start the game. Aharon tries to stop him, but he ends up making a shot. Aharon starts following the ball but can't handle it. Rado thinks, she sucks at it, this time I can win. He makes three shots continuously as Aharon can't stop him. Aharon gets ready to make a shot. Rado is blocking her path. But she slips from below and throws the ball into the ring. Rado recalls how she slipped through his blind spot to throw the ball and is impressed by this. This time Rado thinks he'll stop her. She jumps towards him, and he thinks he will stop her, but suddenly she slips from under his legs and throws it. But the ball doesn't go inside the ring, and she loses. Rado shakes hands with her, saying, you did an amazing job. The next day she played against other girls in school and ends up scoring zero. Rado thinks, the hurdle for global competition is really high. After school, they come across the zombie game. He asks Aharon if she wants to play, and she nods. When she picks up the gun and starts playing, Rado looks at her and realizes the screen is a bit high for her. He tells her to play from a bit farther away. He imagines she's a tiny herbivore. I will protect her from the zombies, he thinks, but he ends up getting defeated by himself. And thinks, now she's surrounded by zombies, they will make her their food. But Aharon starts firing at them, giving all of them headshots and kills them. She then puts the coin in for another player, and now with two guns, she keeps shooting them. At the end, she finally defeats the final zombie king. Rado is amazed by her gaming skills as she cleared the game. Next, they sit to drink something when Aharon looks toward the toilet. She goes to the toilet, meanwhile, Rado goes to play. But he spots Aharon in front of a crane machine. He asks her why she is here, and she is completely shocked. Rado thinks she has never made a face like that before, does she have amnesia? He asks, do you remember me? I'm Rado. She says, oh, Rado Kun. He feels relieved that she remembers and asks, are you having trouble playing the game? She nods, and Rado plays for her, taking out a teddy. She feels extremely happy. She then takes him to play the zombie games. She ends up losing and complains loudly. Then she plays the coin game and high fives Rado for winning it. She then starts pulling his cheeks, saying, you should smile more. Rado doesn't understand her change in behavior. They then eat Tayaki together. He looks at her, then thinks and asks, just who are you? You're not the Aharon Sin I know. But the way you are behaving today is totally different. You only look like her. So the conclusion is you are just her body double. Just then, the real Aharon appears. Rado asks, no way, are you a clone? Are there dozens of you out there? He wonders which one is real. The fake Aharon tells him, this is the real Aharon. My big sister. Aharon tells him, he is my little brother, Ren, who always put on my uniform. Ren says, sorry for playing a trick on you. Rado says, nice to meet you. Ren then walks away, saying, I'm going to go home first. Rado and Aharon also walk toward home. She thanks him for playing with her brother. Just then, Rado sneezes, saying, it's a bit cold. Aharon hugs him, saying, I am warm, I'll warm you up. He says, I'm fine, thank you. You can let go. She went too far, Rado thinks, you didn't have to go that far. Next day during break, Rado takes out his lunch and says, let's go eat. But when she opens her bag to take out her lunch, it's empty. Rado asks, did you forget your lunch? She has a shocking realization that yes, she did, and she falls down. Rado picks her up as she says, I left it at home. She then says, I am going to the school store to buy something for lunch. As she walks out, Rado thinks, the store is a den of brutality, it's crowded. Too dangerous for Aharon. I can't let her go alone. They go to the school store, and it is really crowded, not easy to enter. Aharon tells him, I am going ahead. Rado thinks, maybe because of her tiny body she can enter, but in the next second, she falls out. He picks her up and asks if she's fine. 
she says, lunches are gonna sell out and there is still a crowd near the counter. Rado says, I have a plan. She sits on his shoulder, and he takes her towards the counter. She speaks out for an order, but her low voice is inaudible amidst the sound of the crowd. So they try to go out to think of a new idea, but only Rado is thrown out. He looks for Eherin, who is left there and surfing through the crowd. She reaches the counter. She tells her order, though the voice is too low for the lady at the counter. In the next second, she's bumped out, and Rado catches her. She tells him lunches were sold out, so she only got a melon bun. He asks, will that be enough for you? And her strange movement tells him no, it isn't. He then offers his lunch, saying, let's trade. She replies, a melon bun will not be enough for you. He says, I am just returning a favor, you always share your lunch with me. So she takes it and gives her bun to him. They then head out to eat their lunch. Just then, a dog appears. Rado thinks, why is this beast here? And Aharon approaches it and takes the lunch box. Aharon tells him, he's here to deliver my lunch. And Rado replies, good for you. She pats him and thanks him. As the dog leaves, she asks, is it okay if we still trade? And Rado nods. Later, she finishes her lunch, but Rado is still eating as Aharon's lunches are always big. Now, he is sitting in class and is totally stuffed with lunch. Ishikawa appears and asks him to join them to play cards. They all sit together and decide to play old maid. Rado takes the cards and starts shuffling them. Then, each person gets their cards to play. Rado internally says, this seems to be a game of luck but there's a surface strategy to winning, and I'm the one who will control you all and win the game. He internally shares the strategy that if you end up with an even number of cards left, you're twice as likely to win a round in Old Maid. The reason being, if you have an even number of cards, you have two chances to make a pair, whereas with an odd hand, you only have one. He tells Sato to go first and draw from him. She picks the card, and then Ishikawa picks from her. After a while, Aharin is already out, and they are amazed. The other two are also out, and Rado loses with the old maid, Aka Joker, and thinks, is it really a game of luck? As the second round begins, he thinks of another strategy to win. I draw the card, Eharin picks from Ishikawa. If it doesn't make a pair for her, it has for either me or Sato-san. The card she picks up, she's shocked to see it and starts acting weirdly as if she got the old maid card. Rado is confused because Aharon usually has a poker face, but this time she's easily readable. He internally says, I know it's a bait, so I'll choose another card. But then he stops his hands and thinks again how Aharon always wins against him in every game. This could be a trap of hers, anticipating my next move. And then he picks up the same card she picked from Ishikawa and is shocked. He looks at the card, Aharon feels sad for him that he again got the old maid, and he lost. She already hinted at him not to pick it. For the third round, he didn't think much, and they start playing. Now Rado picks up the card from Aharon. He gets the old maid and thinks of a strategy to win. And in the next moment, we see Sato is already out and safe, and so is Ishikawa. Now only Rado and Aharon are left. He thinks the strategy to win now is observation. It's his turn to pick up. He struggles to decide just then Aharon moves her eyes, and he picks up, thinking this one must be right. He checks the card he picked, and it's the old maid. Now Aharon picks a card and wins as her cards pair up, while Rado loses and thinks, I will never trust her again. Aharon tells him, I didn't move my eyes to the card, but I looked away because I got embarrassed that you were staring at me. And he says sorry for doubting her. On the way home, Rado thinks, yet again, I couldn't beat her. The next day in class, when the teacher is teaching, Rado looks at Aharon, who falls asleep and thinks, that's one opulent sleeping position. When the class ends, he tells her, wake up, we need to switch classrooms. She gets up but is completely silent and not moving. Rado assumes this is a sensitive age. Kids like Aharon feel like skipping class for no particular reason. Seeing Aharon mute and not moving, her silence speaks volumes. She doesn't rush into misconduct. She's so strong and proud. But just then, she speaks up, I was asleep in the same position for long, now I feel numb. So, he puts her on the seat and carries her on his back to another class. The teacher starts teaching. Rado asks her, are you feeling better now? She moves her body, saying, yes, I feel good now. But as the class ends, she's asleep again in that position. He tells her, class is over, and she wakes up feeling numb again. Rado thinks, if she keeps falling asleep like this, she might never be able to leave school, and she will have to do all the home tasks here. He then carries her to the other class and thinks, maybe I'll have to carry her on my back for the rest of my life. He puts her back in her seat and asks, why are you so tired today? She takes out the lunch box, saying, I was up late thinking about what kind of sides you'd want with lunch because you didn't finish it yesterday. 
He says, you got it wrong, it was good, but I was very much stuffed. Next, we see Futaba thinking that she'll feed Ak on her homemade lunch during their field trip. She made a test run today to try it out. But as she reaches the park, she spots Aharon with lunch. Aharon says, I forgot today was a half day. And he says, it's fine, we can eat here. Futaba thinks Aharon made lunch to snare Akon. She confronts Aharon, saying, I challenge you to a lunch duel, and shows her phone with the police number, saying if Rado says something, she'll call. She takes out her lunch and says, try it. Both eat it. But it tastes so gross, yet she brags that she put her special twist in it. Now it's her turn to taste Aharon's lunch. She takes her first bite, and it's tasty. But then she says, anyone can make nice rolled eggs. She eats a meatball, and it's even yummier, and she hates to admit that Aharon is a really good cook. She then asks Aharon to teach her how to cook. They are surprised. So, Futaba says, I am serious. So now they are in the kitchen, and they are going to teach her to cook. Next, we see a tasty bento made by Futaba, and she's so happy she made it. She tastes it and says, it's tasty. Aharon says, Akon will definitely like it and appreciates her for her work. Futaba wants to thank her but instead ends up saying, I totally tricked you. She leaves, saying, you are naive, you helped your enemy. As she walks out, she feels bad for not being able to thank Aharon. At night, she sleeps with the bento she prepared for Akon close by. The next day, the art teacher in class announces that everyone is free to make any type of art they want for the project. Rado says to Aharon, let's decide it together. They end up deciding to make a landscape painting as they draw it in the park. Rado's drawing turns out badly made. Just then, Futaba appears, and she's in an angry mood. She blames Aharon, saying, you poisoned the lunch that day. Akon got an upset tummy because of that. Rado asks, you took the lunch we made that day. She says yes, and he replies, you need to make lunch fresh that morning, or it'll spoil. In the next scene, we see Rado and Aharon thinking about making portraits for the art project. He tells her, you need to observe your model first to make one. And Aharon starts observing his every inch so much that he says, it's a little too much observation. Now it's his turn to observe, but Aharon starts shaking her head, saying, it's embarrassing to be watched. So, they ditch this idea and start to make something from clay. Rado tries to sculpt his sister, but it turns out badly made. When he looks at Aharon, she's making something that will take a long time to make. Finally, he ends up making a self-portrait for the art project. He goes to check on Aharon, she's sitting. He asks, what did you make? But when he touches her, she falls to the ground. He thinks, is she asleep again with open eyes? He checks if she's breathing and panics that she's not. He starts giving CPR, but just then, Aharon appears and tells him, it's the doll I made. Rado is impressed that she made a realistic looking doll. Now we see them walking back home after school. Rado says, I'm glad you got a good grade for making this doll. She tells him, you can take this. He says, I can't accept it, but then ends up bringing it home. He can't sleep as it feels like a real Aharon staring at him. In the next scene, we see Tobaru walking in the school hall when Miyahira calls her. She asks her to eat lunch together on the roof today. At the roof, Miyahira looks at Tobaru's lunch and comments, This much you eat. You collapse a lot, so you should really eat more. She shares some of her lunch, and they eat together. Just then, Rado and Aharon appear and greet them. Tobaru remembers that these two are the most esteemed duo. They both sit there to have their lunch. She recalls how she's been anticipating these two in a variety of romantic situations every day. Just then, she spots Ashiro watching both of them from above and thinks maybe Ashiro secretly has feelings for Aharon. This twist in the story she didn't expect. She looks back at her and thinks Ashiro seems to want to sit with them and eat but is stopping herself, and her respect increases in Tobaru's eyes. Just then, Aharon finds her and tells her to come and sit with them. She jumps down. Tobaru thinks she'll sit next to Aharon, but seeing Ashiro sitting far away, she's amazed that Ashiro might not want to come in between. Miyahira gives her water, thinking Tobaru doesn't seem to be fine. She drinks the water, but then she sees, even though they are far apart, Aharon is feeding Ashiro with long chopsticks. She's totally amazed. It is so cordial that it raises her blood esteem level too high, and Miyahira gives her a bag to breathe properly. After that, Aharon and Rado move closer to Ashiro. Seeing their generosity, Tobaru gets a nosebleed. After lunch, Ashiro sees some food crumbs on Aharon's face and wipes them. Tobaru thinks care and providing a sense of security is even more worthy of esteem. She imagines all three of them as a nuclear-esteemed family. 
As usual, she couldn't bear the scene and chokes. Seeing her condition, Miyahira gives her some oxygen. At night, when Tobaru heads to bed, she starts to imagine Aharon and Rado in even more situations. In the first situation, Rado is sitting on the roof. Aharon appears and asks, why are you skipping classes? He says, I'll do what I like. Aharon approaches him, but he's having a banana which falls off. She slips on it and ends up falling too close to him. Tobaru nosebleeds, imagining this, and cleans herself up. The next situation she imagines is Rado being the most popular and rich boy in school, and girls are dying to be with him. Aharon watches this from afar and thinks, though I like him, we are no match as I am too ordinary for him. Later, she walks back home but finds Rado in her bathtub. She is shocked to see him asking, what are you doing here? He tells her, I like you and I want to marry you, she says, but this is so sudden. He asks, why, you don't want it. He goes closer to her and holds her, saying, I'll do anything I can to make you mine. Imagining this situation, Tobaru gets so excited that she nosebleeds profusely. Later, when she wakes up, she sees Miyahira is already there. Miyahira tells her, you are not responding to my texts, so I came to check on you. You are unconscious and covered in blood. She then gives her the food she made for her, saying, you lost a lot of blood, so you need to eat up. Tobaru thanks her for coming. She then eats the food and tells Miyahira that it tastes good. The next day in class, Ishikawa and Sato invite Rado and Aharon to go to a festival tomorrow to watch fireworks. Rado says, I'm in, and asks Aharon, do you want to join? Aharon removes the wooden block under which Oshiro was hiding and asks, can she come, too? They say okay. The next day, Ishikawa meets Rado at the meeting spot. Just then, the girls also appear in their kimonos. They look beautiful. Rado says, you look good in that, and Aharon mentions, Oshiro helped me put it on. Next, we see Aharon pulling them both quickly because she wants to go to a food stall. Rado thinks, other than food stalls, there are many games to play. And all of my friends are good at games, we're going to rock it. Just then, he looks at Aharon, who is holding a lot of food to eat. Seeing this, he says, we can play after you eat. But she walks toward a game stall and comes back saying, I am out of money. Rado says, you can take my money. But first he gets ready with a gun to play the shooting game. He aims for the first prize, but it turns out that Oshiro is the one who ends up shooting the first prize. Rado gets up and apologizes to Aharon for not being able to win a prize for her. Oshiro appears with the prize, saying, you can have it. Aharon thanks both of them, saying, pick anything you want to eat. And in the next moment, we see her feeding them both. Next, we see Ishikawa and Sato trying to catch fish but failing. Rado thinks Aharon also wants to try, so he tells her, can you catch one fish for me? She says okay and he gives the scoop to her. She then goes to catch the fish. She dips the scoop in at the perfect 45 degrees to catch fish, as Rado thinks she's an expert goldfish catcher, but it's the opposite as she struggles to catch the fishes. She's having trouble judging the distance of the fishes. Now, they play together and then eat together and Oshiro cleans her up. And finally, they eat ice cream together. Now, we see Tobaru and Miyahira also appear at the festival. Tobaru spots Aharon and Rado together, and assuming it's a love triangle, she nosebleeds so much that she falls unconscious. People gather to see what happened, and the trio just wonders from afar. Now, Rado looks at his watch and says the fireworks are about to start. But he realizes the girl holding his hand is Futaba and not Aharon. Rado looks around, it's not only Aharon, but other friends are also not there. Futaba looks for her dad. Meanwhile Aharon is walking and spots Shirorin. She turns to tell Rado, but he's not there. She and Rado both realize at the same moment that they are lost in different places. Back to Rado, Futaba asks, are you a child abductor? Rado replies, you are the one pulling on my arm. He tells her to call her dad, but when she checks her bag, she forgot to bring her phone. He says, you can borrow mine, but he realizes he dropped his phone somewhere. He says, let's go to the help desk, and she runs to hold him, saying, walk slower. Now they reach the help desk, and the man says he informed her dad he'll be here soon. Rado looks at the time and thinks the fireworks will start soon, I better get going. As he walks away, Futaba says, wait, with teary eyes. He looks back and says, okay, I'll stay until your dad gets here. She says thank you to him. Just then, her dad appears and thanks Rado for escorting her here. She then takes her dad away, saying, let's get going. Rado now thinks of finding the others. As he's about to leave, he spots Aharon there. Aharon hugs him, relieved they reunited. The man asks if he is her guardian, and he says it's not like that. She tells Rado, I was lonely, and Rado says, it's fine now, we are reunited. 
He then checks his phone and realizes it was in another pocket. They both then run to see the fireworks. Meanwhile, Tobaru wakes up from her unconsciousness, but when she spots Aharon and Rado together, she nosebleeds and falls back again, and Miyahira is completely in panic. On the way to watch fireworks, Aharon's slipper straps break. Rado looks at it, but just then, the fireworks start. They start watching it from there only. Aharon says, I can't able to watch it. So Rado takes her on his shoulders, and she says, Since I'm small, I've never gotten to see stuff like this before. Thank you, Rado kun The fireworks are really pretty, and Rado agrees. Afterwards, he fixes her slippers. He then tells her, Let's go, by asking for her hand. She gives her hand to him to hold and blushes. Then they walk. They reunite with the others, and Aharon runs to hug Oshiro. They both get emotional. Seeing this, Tobaru gets another nosebleed and falls unconscious again. Next day, Rado enters the classroom, but when he sits, he feels like he has a fever. Just then, Aharon appears and greets him good morning. His face is totally flushed with fever but looks appealing. Aharon blushes and does weird hand movements by his looks. He says, I've caught a bit of a cold. Others also appear and greet him. He greets back. As he caught a cold, his voice also changes and sounds appealing, like his face, that everyone gets flushed. During class, he loosens his tie as he feels hot due to fever. This Tobaru thinks, is he making a stunning animalistic appeal to his partner? And nosebleeds with excitement saying, very enchanting. Suddenly, Rado feels lightheaded, and he falls down. Ishikawa cries out, Rado, are you alright? Ashiro says, let's take him to the nurse. As they pull him up, he says, I'll go home. He gets back home, and his sister says, you're back early. He unbuttons his shirt, saying, I'm covered in sweat, and looks appealing. His sister says, don't get naked here. She gives him lemon water and says, drink this and get some rest. Now he's sleeping soundly in his bed. The next day when he wakes up, he feels totally recovered. His sister enters and asks, how are you feeling today? He says, I feel good. He then goes to school. His friends enter the class, asking how are you feeling today? He says, I'm all better now. He looks at Aharon's seat, she's absent today. Later, when the class ends, Miss Tobaru approaches him and says, Could you bring her handouts as she's out today with a cold? He says, Okay, and thinks maybe Aharon caught my cold. After school, he walks toward her house, but just then, he spots Aharon at the shop. He gets closer to her and thinks, No way, Aharon Sangru. She's holding a katana, and her eyes seem to have murderous intent. Rado thinks she's Aharon in adult form after becoming an assassin, a time traveler who is sent back to the past to change the future. Just then, the girl approaches him and asks, Why have you been staring at me for a while? He asks, You are not Aharon. And hearing Aharon's name, she says, You must be Rado. She tells him, I'm Aharon's sister, Iru. He says, Oh, it's a perfect time. Could you give these handouts to your sister? She asks, why should I do it? Seeing this looks on her face, Rado thinks, is Aharon and her sister are at bad terms with each other. But then she says, Aharon will be much happier if you gave her the handouts. He says, all right, I'm sorry. As she is leaving, he asks, is there anything your sister needs? She says, I don't know why you're asking me, and then shows him things he already bought for Aharon, like cooling sheets and a face mask. Rado replies, amazing, you're really dependable. She says, give these things to her, too. Afterwards, she tells him, this is the plushie Aharon wants. I'm gonna get it for her. She starts to play the game. Just when Rado thinks she might be as good as Aharon, the plushie falls down. She tries again and again until she runs out of money. She looks towards Rado, and Rado says, let me try it once. She says, fine, but it's super difficult. But he takes one from there. He gives it to her, saying, you can give it to Aharon. She takes it but then gives it back, saying, you should give it to her. She'll feel happy. He says, I think your sister would also be happy to get a present from you, though. She blushes and then says, ugh, I'm going home. But don't follow me. If we arrive together, she'll think we both bought the things. Later, Rado arrives at her home, and her brother says, it's Rado Nini. Rado takes out handouts and gives them to her. And then the plushie also, she thanks him, saying, I wanted it. He replies, actually, I ran into your sister Aru, she told me to get it. Aharon hugs her, saying, I'm glad, thank you Aru for everything, and Aru just blushes. Rado then says, this bag is filled with stuff Aru bought for you. Aharon checks it and thanks her. Rado takes out tuna from the bag, and Aru says, I'd make a tuna dish to help Aharon feel better. Now, Aru starts slicing tuna. Seeing this, Rado says, I think you're also a good cook, like Aharon. Rado also starts helping her to cook. She says, I want Aharon to get well soon. 
Rado says, you're a very protective sister. Iru replies, she's family. Besides, I don't have much time left to fuss over her like this. Rado thinks, is it because Iru has some kind of serious illness that she has only a little time to live? But just then, she reveals it's because once Aharon grows up, it'll probably be hard to look after her. He says, oh, that's what you mean. She then asks Rado, how do you feel about my sister? He says, she not only sits next to me in class, but she's my friend also. She says, Eherin always talks about you at home. That's why I've been interested to see what kind of person you are. She looks at the knife and says, I was thinking what I might do if you turned out to be a bad guy. Rado asks, what would you do if I were? And she points the knife towards him. Afterwards, Rado gets ready to leave. Aharon hugs him, saying, thank you for everything. Guru is listening to everything by hiding behind the wall. Afterward, they sit together to eat. Their little brother says, I wish Rado Nanyai would have stayed for dinner. Aharon says, yeah, right. She then asks Aru, what do you think of Rado Kun? She says, he's a mysterious person, that's what I thought. Later in the bathtub, Aru tells her brother the way Aharon behaves around Rado seems like she has some special feelings for him. Ren says, I am also curious about it. If they both are dating, I'll ask them next time. Aru says, what do we do if they're dating? Ren replies, I'd be happy. And Aru says, yeah, me too. The next day, while Rado is walking down the street, Ren calls him. He asks, what are you doing here? Ren replies, I'm going on an errand to the supermarket. Do you want to come with me? Rado says, okay, and then they go to the supermarket. Rado asks, do you always go shopping by yourself? Ren replies, no, it's just today because Arunin is busy taking care of Aharon. He then puts all the stuff in the basket he has to buy. They then walk toward the counter to pay for things. But when Ren checks for his wallet, it is not there. He's in cold sweat, thinking he lost all his money. What do I do? Rado gives him his wallet, saying, you can use this. Ren hugs him, saying, thank you, Rado Nainai. But when he opens it, he says, it's empty. Now he's left with only one choice. Rado thinks Ren is going to use revolving credit. It's convenient if you have no money and want expensive things. But if you continue using a revolving card, the monthly repayment amount will disappear in interest alone and eventually become an amount you can't pay back. That's called credit card bankruptcy. But his assumption was wrong. Ren is thinking of using his pocket money to pay for things. They ask for his wallet at the counter, but the lady doesn't know. So they decide to go out to find it, as he might have dropped it on the way to the supermarket. As they come out, a dog is already there with the wallet. Ren takes it, thanks the doggy, and pats him for finding it. Rado says, he seems to be a smart dog. Just then, Ren remembers the question and asks, are you and Aharon Nini dating? Before Rado can say anything, Aharon appears from behind. She tells them that her doggy, Nui, suddenly ran away while they were out for a walk, so she followed her and reached here. She asks you guys were talking about something. Ren says, nothing at all. Just then, Rado calls Aharon by her first name, Rene, and she is almost flushed, saying, just Aharon is fine, while Ren excitedly looks at her reaction. Later, we see Aru lying sick in bed, she caught a cold. Aharon gives her some water, saying, it's my turn to take care of you. You can ask anything from me. Aru asks for ice cream, and she really brings a big-sized vanilla ice cream. Next day in class, Ishikawa says, let's go camping. Sato says, sounds like fun, I'm in. Rado looks at Aharon, who seems very excited to go. Ishikawa invites Oshiro also. He then says, all right, sounds like everyone's in. The next day, Rado is waiting for everyone when they all appear. But Aharon is not here yet, and Rado thinks was she so excited that she stayed up late, and has now overslept. He goes to check but finds her struggling to get up with an overstuffed bag and helps her. Now they all head towards the mountains, and Miyahira is dropping them there in her car. She then presses the brake and makes a deadly turn, and everyone's cries come out. Now they reach the camping place. Rado says, let's set up the tents, but Aharon already did. She's seriously fired up. Later, they decide to prepare for dinner as the sun will set soon. Aharon opens her bag to take out the ingredients for dinner. But it turns out she forgot the ingredients. Tears come out of her eyes, and Rado comforts her. It's okay, it happens. She says, but I wanted to help. Rado replies, I have an idea. He then goes to meet the groundskeeper and takes permission to collect edible plants from the woods. Rado then tells his friends, let's all look for stuff we can eat. Ishikawa says, nice, this sounds like fun. Now they find chocolate vine fruits, and Oshiro helps Aharon to pluck them. Rado then tells them, we can find some mountain yams there. He finds some oysters also, which are edible. Later, he gives a fishing rod to Aharon, saying, try to catch some fishes. She puts the fishing rod in the water. Rado looks at her and internally says, this should be a good distraction to help Aharon Sanchir up. 
In the meantime, I will use this to get us food. With full focus, he looks at the stream so he can find some fish. Just then, he spots a fish and he runs after it. He uses the spear to catch it, but it runs away. Just then, Ashiro appears and asks, can I help you? She takes the spear to catch the fish. A thought comes into Rado's mind. What if she's planning to run me through with this spear to get some alone time with Aharon? Just then, a fish appears and Ashiro uses the spear to catch it. She tells him, a relative of mine is a fisherman. He taught me how to catch fish. Rado then says, since I always spend time with Aharon, I thought you might be mad about it. She replies, yes, I'm jealous and I wondered if I should skewer you with this spear. But when I see Aharon with you, she seems happy. This made me understand you might be scary, but you're not a bad person. Rado says, well, that's good. Just then, they hear the sound of Aharon catching the fish. Afterwards, he takes all the things to the groundskeeper, who says everything seems to be okay. Now, Aharon takes out the knife to prepare the meal. Rado tells her, I'll prepare the rice to help you. The food is ready and looks so delicious. Aharon thanks Rado for the help, and Rado says, we all work together. Now they all enjoy the food together. At night, they all play cards. Ashiro feels sleepy and goes to sleep, saying, this is around the time I normally sleep. Ishikawa says to Rado, why don't we have a little adventure? They walk together to explore the forest more. Ishikawa says, why don't we give them some alone time? Sato says, good idea. As they reach a bit far from their tent, Rado asks, how far are we going? But when he looks back, they both vanished. The thought that comes to his mind is, is this treachery, leaving us behind in the wood while they go home on their own? Aharon asks, where'd they go? He tells her they had to go to the bathroom because he thinks he shouldn't tell her to make sure she doesn't panic. They sit together in a place because the first rule of being lost at night is to not wander far. He says to Aharon, wanna do some stargazing. He tells her, look at that brightest star. Aharon says, stars are really pretty, aren't they? Rado replies, yeah. They are, and Aharon gazes at him. Meanwhile, Ishikawa and Sato are watching them from the bushes. Just then, Aharon tells Rado, I want to say something. He curiously looks at her, and she couldn't able to say. They both look into each other's eyes. Suddenly, a beast appears who starts approaching them. Ishikawa and Sato are also totally scared. The beast runs fastly towards them, and Rado protects Aharon. But it jumps from the side onto Aharon and licks her. Rado looks back and finds out it's her dog. Ishikawa and Sato also reach there. Aharon says, it's okay, this is my dog, Nui. Nui brought all the ingredients Aharon forgot. Aharon pats Nui, saying, good work, Nui. While Sato and Ishikawa say, Nui is a smart dog. Ishikawa then says, it's time to sleep, let's head back. Now Rado can't sleep, while Ishikawa is soundly asleep. Meanwhile, Ashiro wakes up, thinking, I was having a hard time sleeping and woke up at a weird time. Ashiro looks at Aharon and asks, you didn't sleep yet. She replies, I was having trouble sleeping. Just then, she looks at Sato and thinks, if we make sound, she'll wake up. Aharon says, I'll move over to you, and asks for some advice from Ashiro. She says, I want to tell Rado how I feel about him, but I am afraid if I tell him and then we can't spend time in the same way anymore, that would be scary. Ashiro holds her hand, saying, you are really strong, Aharon. I'm sure it'll be okay, just tell him. Just then, they hear a sound. She looks outside, Rado is boiling water, he must not have slept either. Ashiro says, go over to him and tell him, I'm sure it'll be okay. Aharon blushes and says, okay, she wears her jacket and is about to move out when Ashiro holds her from the back. She asks her to wait, and looking at her face, she realizes, I'm just jealous. So she just says, good luck, and Aharon says, thank you. Outside Rado mixes hot water into noodles. Aharon comes out of the tent. He asks, so you can't sleep either. Let's eat noodles together. They eat together, and after they finish, Aharon starts feeling cold, and Rado puts his jacket over her. She asks, what about you? He replies, I'm almost hot after eating. She thanks him and says, I want to tell you something. She blushes and starts speaking something, but her voice is almost inaudible. Rado also says something, but the wind starts blowing so fast that it's almost inaudible too. Aharon looks at him and then kisses him on the lips. Tears fall from her eyes, and then she runs inside her tent. Rado just silently watches her go. She lies with teary eyes, and Ashiro is still awake. The next morning, Rado enters the class, Ishikawa and Sato greet him. Rado sits in his seat. Just then, Aharon appears and seems too chubby. Rado is confused. Does Aharon put some weight on? He thinks, is it because of overeating, or is it Rikishi training? She must be preparing to be a sumo wrestler. She can't sit, so Rado helps her to sit. Rado then thinks, when she becomes a sumo, I can be her assistant. I want to support her dream. 
but just then, she told him, I was feeling cold, so I put on some extra layers. He helps her to take out all the extra layers. Sato tells Ishikawa, look at them, they are gazing into each other's eyes. Rado then looks at the layers of clothes but then realizes Aharon is missing. A thought comes into his mind, is this like an onion? Removing too many layers from Aharon made her disappear just like an overpeeled onion. But then she comes out from the piles, and says, now I feel cold. He says, I'll warm you up. They both think, is he going to give her a warm hug? But it turns out he helps her do activities that can warm her up. They then eat chili potato chips. Ashiro also appears, and Ishikawa tells her, when you were asleep, we thought of leaving them alone, thinking something might happen between them. But it seems like nothing did. Ashiro remembers she saw both of them too close on camp night, but she doesn't tell anyone. Later on the way back home, Miss Toboru spots Aharon and Rado. Aharon wraps the scarf around him. Toboru thinks their love is so strong it's an overkill of esteem. She holds Miyahira's hand, saying, Just for a while, let me stay like this. Miyahira blushes, asking, What is that about? Just then, Toboru sees Aharon and Rado now sharing the same blanket. And her excitement reaches a level that's hard to control now. Miyahira asks, Are you okay, Tobaru? But Tobaru pins her down, and Miyahira says, Not in public. Just then, Rado holds Aharon up to avoid her getting her feet wet in a puddle. Seeing this, Tobaru says, I'm at my limits, and falls on Miyahira, who realizes that Tobaru is just not feeling well. She looks at Aharon and Rado and thinks, Did something happen when they went camping? They seem different. At night, his sister says, Ni chan, come check it out. He goes towards the window and they see that snow has started falling. The next day, he walks towards the school and the surroundings are covered in snow. He enters the school gate, but then he looks back and thinks, is this a giant snow-based life form? He thinks of running, believing it's a giant monster, but then stops when Aharon appears, greeting him. She invites him inside. She then changes her clothes and looks very cute in her maid attire. She welcomes him to her cafe, saying, order whatever you like. He gives his order, saying, I'll take the morning special, thinking they're just playing. She turns on the stove and then starts preparing the coffee. After that, she starts cooking the meat. When everything is prepared, she puts the tablecloth on the table and prepares it. It looks very nice. Rado thinks this is one serious cafe. Aharon says, please enjoy. They then finish eating while sipping coffee. Rado says, I never imagined I'd get to relax like this on my way to school. Just then, he realizes they have to reach the class or they're going to be late. Later, at the end of the day at class, Aharon asks, Do you want to drop by the cafe on the way home? But when they reach there, it has collapsed. Aharon feels sad, so Rado cheers her up, saying, Let's rebuild it. Aharon says, Thank you, and then they start rebuilding it. At the end, it turns out to be built into a giant monster. Rado thinks, It's rebuilt into a totally different thing. Just then, he looks at Aharon's hands, which are cold because of the snow. Rado holds her hands, saying, I'll heat up your hands, and she blushes while he does so. The next morning, when Rado is on his way to school, Aharon calls him from behind. They walk together, but Aharon seems stiff. He thinks, has she gone mechanical? But she tells him, when I woke up this morning, I had stiff shoulders. Rado says, let's go to the nurse's office. As they reach the nurse's office, nobody is there. So he tells Aharon, let me help you stretch. He starts stretching her, and then she tries to move, but it's still there. He stretches her again, but then she says, do it again. This time, he starts to stretch her in different ways. Now she's able to move more flexibly and thanks him. She then falls down on the bed to relax. Rado then starts stretching his shoulders. She says, let me help. He sits down, and she starts rubbing his shoulders. He remembers his sister walking on his back and asks the same from Aharon. Aharon says okay and takes off her socks. She steps on his back and starts walking but is totally flushed. While she walks, Rado feels so good that he falls asleep. Seeing this, she says, did you fall asleep? She jumps down and walks closer to him. She tells him in his ears, wake up, we have class, but he's still asleep. She goes closer to him and is about to kiss him when suddenly the nurse appears. Aharon is flushed. In the next scene, as class gets over, Ishikawa approaches and says, let's head home together. Aharon says, wait, and goes to check for Ashiro, but she's not there. So the four of them walk out together. Sato looks back at them and asks Ishikawa if they both seem like they are dating. She looks back again and is confused by Aharon's expression. Rado reads her expression that Aharon is hungry. Ishikawa suggests, let's eat something. At the restaurant, Aharon is totally stuffed after eating. Then she falls asleep. Rado says, I am going to the bathroom. Ishikawa now starts conversing with Sato. They talk about Rado and Aharon being more than friends. Sato says, Rado is a nice guy 
and Ishikawa asks, what do you think about me? Am I interesting? She says, yes, you are, and Ishikawa replies, I think you are interesting too. She blushes, saying, I'm not. Just then, Reido appears and asks, did anything happen? Sato says, nothing. Now Aharon also wakes up from her sleep and is back to normal. At night, Aharon is trying to decide what to wear tomorrow. After some time, she finally decides. The next day, Reido is waiting for her outside the mall. She's late, so he looks at a tournament poster and thinks, is she going to participate in the hand spinners tournament? Was she up late last night deciding how to customize her gear? Seems like she's going to win this tournament. Just then, she appears and looks so beautiful in this dress. She says, sorry for being late, and Rado says, it's fine, let's head in. As they walk in, shop owners offers food, and she can't resist it, ending up all stuffed. Now they walk forward, and a thought comes into Rado's mind, what if she's going to be a hotel tycoon in the future? And as food is a quintessential part of it, she is trying every food until then to decide which one she's going to use. Just then, she tells him, I'm going to prepare the New Year's dinner this time. And then, looking at crabs, she asks him if he likes it. She buys the crabs as Rado says yes. They then walk to another shop where she selects a t-shirt for him. Now they enjoy eating different things. After eating, as they walk out, Akun and Futaba spot them. Rado asks, what are you doing at the mall? Futaba says, we're on a date, and Akun says, you just wanted to tag along. Futaba sees Rado and Aharon too close and wants to ask if they are on a date here, but her ego won't let her. Just then, Akon cries out, why is this apprentice with you, king? You forgot I'm your first apprentice. He challenges Rado in a blade tournament, saying, the one who'll win will be the best apprentice of King Aharon. He takes out his spinner, saying, let's get ready, and Rado also takes his out, saying, okay. But it turns out they both lose in the first round, and Akon is crying. Rado tries to comfort him. He then looks for Aharon. Just then, he hears the noise of the crowd and approaches. They see Aharon has already won the tournament. Akon says, you are amazing, king. She tells him, look over there. It's Futaba with a prize, she won the prize in the girls' division. Seeing this, Akon praises her, and Futaba thanks him as she blushes. Rado says to Aharon, looks like it's a happy ending for them. Futaba says, you guys can go back to your date. Rado says, we are just hanging out together. Futaba asks, isn't hanging out like this dating? Thinking about this, Aharon is totally flushed. The next day at school, Aharon brings a special lunch for Rado. She says, I did a practice run with the dinner I'm going to make for New Year. She opens the box, and it's stuffed with delicious things. He takes a bite, and feels delighted by the taste of it. Aharon looks toward the roof and wonders where Ashiro went. Meanwhile, we see Ashiro in a place where she meditates and then slashes off the thing. She then takes out a letter of challenge, indicating she's preparing for something. Then we see a flashback. Aharon is staring into empty space, and Rado asks, what's this? You're scaring me. But only she knows that Oshiro is watching them from there. After class, when they walk out, Aharon notices her again. When they reach the gate, she turns back and notices Oshiro once more. Rado says, Aharon-san, you've been staring past me all day. Suddenly, he feels a chill and says, I think I'm going to head straight home today. Just as he walks away, Aharon calls out for Ashiro to come out. She says Rado-kun was considerate enough to give us time alone. I want to talk about that night. Ashiro hesitantly asks, are you going out with Rado? Aharon shakes her head, but before she can say anything further, Ashiro runs away. Back to the present, Ashiro thinks that Aharon worked up her courage to tell Rado her feelings, but he rejected her. Now we see Rado, who receives a letter of challenge. The same letter Ashiro had seems like she wrote it to give to Rado. Rado walks out to the meeting place where Ashiro asked him to meet. Just then, Ashiro calls him out from behind, fully prepared with weapons. Rado is confused about what's going on. Ashiro points a sword toward him, saying, I challenge you to a duel. Rado thinks, I'm dead meat, ha. Huh? She challenges him to a game of reversi. Since you have no martial arts experience, this should be fair, she says. Now they start the game. She puts down his first piece angrily, saying, you can't defeat me. As they play, Rado thinks, I don't even know the reason for this challenge. But just then, he sees that she took the corners in the game before he even noticed. She says I've never lost at Reversi, not even to Aharon, and recalls her childhood days. It was the first day of school, and her seatmate was Aharon. The first thing that came to her mind was that Aharon is cute, like a doll. Next, in PE class, Aharon comes closer and asks for a jacket, but it's too big for her. She folds Ashiro's jacket that she wears. Aharon has been cute and a little absent-minded since childhood. 
Her voice is so quiet that she gets really close when she talks. They also start playing reversi together and Oshiro always wins. Oshiro recalls once when they were done cleaning. Aharon goes to put the podium back, but it was too heavy and it falls on her. Oshiro picks it up and then asks Aharon if she's fine and cleans her. You're cute, so you should try to look nice, she tells her. She gives a hairpin to Aharon to wear, but Aharon puts it on Oshiro's hair, saying, you're cute too. Back to the present, Aharon asks Ishikawa where Reido went. He tells her he rushed off somewhere. She walks out to look for Reido but finds Oshiro's hairpin instead and starts looking for her. Back to Reido and Oshiro. He asks her, is there something you want me to do if you win? She says, yes, if you don't feel the same way about her, I want you to stay away from her. Reido says, if that's what you want, then I'm not going to lose this game. He gets serious about playing. Oshiro thinks is he fighting back when he's about to lose the game. And he finally manages to win on the last play. She asks him, if you don't like Aharon, what difference does it make if you lose? He replies, you seem to be mistaken about something. He tells her about that night, Reido shares his feelings, I like Aharon Sam. Just then, they spot Aharon, who's been there for a while. Aharon says, I found your hairpin, so I was looking for you. And she puts it on her, just like in their childhood days. Aharon then tells her, I should have explained what happened. I gave you the wrong idea. That night, I couldn't talk about my feelings. But then Rado told me how he felt. I was really happy, but I couldn't say anything. I just kissed him and ran away from there without saying anything. Hearing this, Ashiro apologizes to Rado for misunderstanding him. He says, it's okay, it happens, and says to Aharon, I am surprised that you heard me that day. She says, Rado kun I want to say that I like you too. And she smiles. Just then, Ishikawa and Sato come out of the bushes and hug them happily as they both confess their feelings. Ashiro also feels happy for them. Ishikawa says, when Aharon was looking for you, we followed her and listened to everything from the bushes. Tears fall from Ashiro's eyes as she recalls why she was always watching Aharon from a distance because she never wanted Aharon to hear her heart pounding. How grateful she has always been to have Aharon. She was always nervous. It was Rado who found her keeping an eye on Aharon and then she got the chance to spend more time with her. As she is recalling this, Aharon turns back, and tears of happiness fall from Oshiro's eyes. And now they all hug each other. The next day, after class, when Rado tells Aharon, let's head home, Aharon says, I have some urgent work to do, and runs away. The thought comes to his mind. Could it be the infamous cold spell, the Anui that descends upon long-time couples? The best cure is to spice things up, bring some excitement into the relationship. Just then, he spots Aharon watering plants. He thinks, are those cassava leaves? Tapioca is made from cassava. Maybe Aharon is trying to start her own tapioca milk tea business, and maybe she's going to make tapioca pearls into cute mascots in order to promote her business. He fires up to support his partner Aharon in this and jumps in, saying, let me help you. Aharon says, sorry for keeping it a secret. I wanted to surprise you. Rado says, now that I find this out, how about we tend them together from now on? Now they both start working together to tend them. And then finally, the day comes when they bloom nicely. Rado realizes that they aren't cassava. She tells him these flowers are called lupinous. Then she says they symbolize something. Rado thinks, what do they symbolize? And Aharon blushes, thinking he's going to tell what they symbolize. He says, it's greed, right. And Aharon makes a puffy face at his wrong guess. He doesn't understand, though. She says, you're dense, Rado kun And he realizes she's mad. He then gives her the bag and says, let's head home. The next day, he wonders why Aharon was mad yesterday. As class ends, she hands a letter to Rado Kun and says, come by later, I'll be waiting. Later, Rado walks toward the meeting place, it's the unused tea room. He enters and sees Aharon preparing tea. She pours some into a glass, and a thought comes to his mind, Aharon, are you like Sen no Rikyu of the Sengoku period, the tea master who spread the art of the tea ceremony? Senoku used the intel he gained at tea circles to become the puppet master of Japan from the shadows. He thinks, is this Aharon's way of telling me she knows my secrets? Are you trying to blackmail me, Aharon san Once, I put my pants on backward by accident, and I hid it so no one would notice. I won $300 in a lottery, and I used to feed peppers to Aharon because I don't like them. You know everything. He then thinks, I know all the basics of the tea ceremony. You can't shake me down that easily. But it turns out Aharon only wants him to have tea. Just then, she takes out a stick, and he gets scared. Meanwhile, Tobaru is sitting in her seat as her head hurts. It's because she saw Aharon and Rado confessing to each other, and she had a nosebleed because of the shock of the great esteem eruption. 
and now she's still not feeling right. Just then, Miyahira appears and shows her the letter they got. Back to Reido, he thinks Aharon wants excitement, so they are going to have a duel. But she hits the block of the roof, and Ashiro comes out from hiding. Others also appear at the same moment. They enter and thank Aharon for inviting them. She thanks them for coming and tells Reido, You came early, so I wanted you to taste test the treats I made. Reido realizes she was not going to duel with him. Now she serves the tea, and Ashiro helps to serve other things. Everyone enjoys the time there while sipping tea. Sato opens the window and says, Look, the cherry blossoms are blooming. And Miss Miyahira says, You all are going to be second years soon. Hearing this, Eharin just walks outside and stands near the flowers. Reido follows her and asks what happened. She says, I don't want to be all alone in high school, and recalls all the moments she spent with Reido and others in their first year. She says, I'm grateful to have you all. She then hugs Reido and says, I'm scared if I end up in a different class from you all in second year, I'll feel alone without you. Reido replies, even if we end up in different classes, I'll be there when you need me. And she blushes. She then tells him the meaning of lupinous flowers, you bring me peace and I'm always happy. She then turns red and Reido says, I'll always be there for you. Just then, they all also appear. Now they all spend time together under the cherry blossoms. The story ends with Reido telling her, Aharon San, I'll never leave you alone. Let's aim for 1 million likes. We will make more beautiful video like this. And what is her favorite thing about this story? I always read each and every one of your comments. So comment right now and don't forget, you guys are the best.